Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Tuesday, November 17th, 2015. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Cardoodle. This is Jim. First up, It's Not Christmas got featured on last week's episode of Saturday Morning Cartoons. That was really exciting, except that the link to the original video was broken for the whole weekend. I know it was an honest mistake, and I did my best to share the link with anybody who wanted it. And honestly, I'm not really mad or anything. They fixed it today. And overall, Channel Frederator has been pretty good to me. You can check out both channel Frederator as well as the original It's Not Christmas cartoon by clicking the letter I in the upper right corner at any time during this blog. Anyway, today I'm working on the next episode of Welcome to Boulder Dash once again. This time I'm setting up a shot that takes place in a news desk. So I promised I'd tell some stories about my short time in broadcasting, so let's talk a little bit about that. Now, news programs always look really flashy and super professional and everything, but the reality is there's a lot of chaos behind the scenes. Even in a somewhat sleep town like where I was working, things were constantly busy. Now, how I actually got to work on the news was actually kind of a result of unexpected chaotic circumstances. I rearranged VHS commercial archives. Probably spent about a week and a half doing nothing but that eight hours a day until finally I got them all completely alphabetized. I'd finally gotten down to literally the letter Z. I was at the few tapes that started with letter Z. And on that day, one of the engineers who did a lot of work in the master control room walked by the room where I was rearranging those tapes and mentioned to me to remember to remove any tape that was dated before 2006. Now, this had never been mentioned to me before. So now I had to start over at the very beginning and start going through tapes again. Now, since I'd already alphabetized most of them, the next round of rearrangement didn't take quite as long. This time, I worked on it for about a week, going through each and every VHS tape and discarding anything with a date before 2006. And it wasn't always as simple as just looking at the tape. A lot of them didn't have dates on the outside packaging, so I had to actually take them out of the shelf, open them, and check. So I worked on that for a while, and eventually I got down to the letter S. And so as I walked down the hallway one day for a water break, I overheard one of the managers, as well as that same engineer talking about potentially moving that entire stack of tapes to an off-site location. So I went up to my boss and asked her, is there something else I can do? She was like, well, I don't know. I think just really work on the tapes. And this is probably the one and only time I give any kind of lip to somebody in management when I said, I am not touching a single tape until this station figures out what they're going to do with them. This is a waste of my time and this station's money. So she was able to find a couple of other jobs for me, one of which was doing research on competing advertisers, such as the local newspaper. That usually involved going down to the local library and looking up newspaper archives on microfiche. You know, finding out who is taking out advertisements and how we could potentially get their business to the local station. And another job they had for me was working in the master control room during the evenings. And I have a story or two specifically about that role that I'll maybe tell next week. But anyway, besides that, I'd occasionally file papers here and there if somebody needed it. So the station I was working at didn't always have local news. In fact, coincidentally, that summer, they were attempting to relaunch a previously failed news program. And so the station owner hired a bunch of other people, including another intern. She was actually a person I knew from school. And believe me when I say I was insanely jealous when I found out she was getting this news internship and I was still relegated to filing papers and rearranging tapes. But then one day she had an emergency at home. I still don't know exactly what it was, but she had to go out of town for a few days. So the news director came up to my boss and said, hey, could I borrow your intern for a little bit? And the next thing I knew, I was working on the news broadcast. Now, this other intern did come back eventually, and I was fortunate enough that I didn't get kicked off of the news team right after that. And it was pretty interesting. There were lots of different levels of experience in that newsroom. I had zero experience. Besides the news director, there were really only one or two people on staff who had real news experience. There's one of those experienced employees in particular that I want to give a shout out to. I'm not going to say her name here because I'm really not sure how she would feel about having her name mentioned on some random cartoon channel, especially because I found out recently that she is now a reporter in the Atlanta area, which is a pretty big market. But just in case she is watching, she knows who she is. Thank you very much. This person taught me a lot about how to put good videos together. Stuff like white balancing and how to focus a camera. How long shots should be before you cut. 
how to take a long story and compress it down to a point where you can still convey the information, but still kind of get in and out really quickly. I've applied all that stuff to my cartoons. I want to get a little more specific about some of the stories I worked on during that summer, but I don't have time this time around. That'll be saved for some later blogs. Anyway, expect the next cartoon by the end of the month. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. That would be absolutely amazing if you could do that. And as always, do like your mom told you and share. I'll see all of you again next Tuesday.